Hi, so today I want to talk a little bit about the history of chelation, kind of where, uh, where it evolved and where we are today uh, in terms of the routes of administration, etc. Uh, chelation started in the 19, be traced back to, into Germany in the 1930s, but it really didn't become prominent in terms of a medical procedure until the 1940s and 50s. Uh, there was a lot of guys who painted ships for the Navy, uh, the U.S. Navy uh, in World War II, they were using the lead-based paint. They got really, really sick. So um, they had to figure out a way to get these guys clean. Well, they did using the chelation therapy, but one of the ancillary benefits that nobody really expected was you were going it was these guys had a tremendous um, benefit, up, upward benefit uh, in their cardiovascular uh, function. So uh, the the guys who the the doctors who were involved with the cardiovascular they saw this and it just this it didn't go unnoticed to them. And what they did is they started to do chelation therapy for a lot of other people. Um, but it never caught mainstream. It still stayed on the kind of like the um, um, on the alternative side. Um, that actually continues even today uh, with alternative doctors who are big believers in, in chelation therapy. Um, but it's still again, it's 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 still on the alternative side. Uh, the mainstream chelation is going to be if you have if you you know if you're acutely toxic with lead. If you go to the doctor, if you go to the emergency room and you're acutely toxic, they will do a chelation therapy on you. But it's just typically it's just one just to just to relieve the the body burden uh, from the heavy metal. Um, but because people were having such success from the cardiovascular standpoint. Um, on the alternative side, there was a, several people who wanted to do some things uh, with chelation in, in uh, uh, foreign countries in the third world, but they didn't know how to do it. Oral EDTA is somewhat effective, but EDTA is, such, is a synthetic amino acid and the molecule is very, very sensitive to the acidic environment of the stomach. And as a result, uh, taking oral EDTA is, you, know, you are going to get some absorption, but it's going to be very, very minimal. That's, that's the primary reason why it's done intravenously. Well, there was a rather forward-thinking doctor who decided, hey, let's put this into a suppository. Uh, and they did. They put this into a suppository and they, they treated a bunch of children down in the Dominican Republic. And I think this was in the late, late 90s, uh, early 2000s. Um, they had a tremendous amount of success with that, but then, so they said, well, wait a second, if it's gonna work for these children, why, why will it not work for adults? So, hence, the suppository route of administration was born. Um, and keep in mind, people are still using the EDTA uh, orally, but again, just not, not as effectively as the suppository. Um, it wasn't until like the late 2000s, uh, early 2010s, when the cream came about. The cream was really kind of in its infancy um, in about, I want to say about 2014, but now the cream is actually out there and it's very prominent. Um, the cream is very, very effective. It's a low dose compared to, compared to the suppository. It's about a third of the dose of the suppository and the suppository is about half the dose, typically speaking, of, of an IV. An IV is going to be anywhere from uh, two to three grams, generally. Uh, suppository route of administration is going to be anywhere from 700 milligrams to anywhere up to like 1,500 milligrams. I know that there are some out there that are up to two grams. I typically don't like to. I wouldn't. I wouldn't advise people use more than 1,500 milligrams of, of the EDTA uh, at one time. The cream is about 350 to 450 milligrams dosage, depending on the cream that you get. Uh, that's, in the, that's available in the marketplace. Uh, the cream is, in my opinion, is one of the very, very best ways you can do it. Number one is that you do not have the negative connotation uh, and anybody will, will rub cream on their body. Uh, not very many people like to take suppositories. It's just not a very glamorous route of administration. But the cream, if you use the cream consistently, uh, it could be used daily, it could be used twice daily. Um, you know, you do that daily, you have a consist consistent low dose of EDTA that is assisting your body taking care or, you know, hel helping your body get rid uh, of some of the heavy metals. Again, it's very important if you do decide to do any one of these chelation uh, routes of administration, you must 
uh, replenish your minerals because the EDTA will, it's a non-discriminate chelator. It's going to take out both good minerals as well as some of the bad metals. So I hope you found this information informative and if you have any questions uh, or anything, please uh, comment below.